The next speaker is going to deliver a talk on the topic indoor diversity what it means to occupant satisfaction inhaled air quality and energy efficiency in buildings. Our speaker received a PhD in building from National University of Singapore. She is now a research fellow at Center for Integrated Building Energy and Sustainability in Tropics at NUS. She has rich research and application experiences in building energy efficiency and sustainability, ventilation and indoor air quality and she has been an invited speaker and lecturer in these areas. She has more than 44 publications in several prestigious international journals and conference proceedings. She is the editorial member of Journal of Sustainable Energy and the guest editor for Energy and Buildings. Please join hands with me in welcoming Dr. Jung Ji Yang. Hello everyone, today I will talk about the indoor diversity, what it means to occupant satisfaction, inhale air quality, and energy efficiency in buildings. So first of all, I would like to mention the air distribution system here, which is responsible to provide the fresh air to maintain the adequate indoor air quality while providing the conditioned air to offset the heating or cooling loads. So its design and operation is critical to properly maintain the desired indoor conditions. Here shows some of the conventional air distribution systems, my mixing ventilation here, uh, where it is always assumed the supplied air will be well mixed in the space. And some of the other distribution systems, such as this displacement ventilation, which introduces the conditioned outdoor air at a low velocity from the air supply diffusers, which is usually located near the floor level. However, even when the mixer ventilation system is used, where it is assumed, uh, assumed the indoor thermal condition is nearly uniform, but in reality, the well mixing and uniformity is very difficult to achieve. And among the amount of air supplied, especially the fresh air supplied, not all the air could reach the, uh, the people or the breathing zone of the people. So just a little of it is used. So here we have a research question of how diverse would the temperature and CO2 be in a room? And what does a varying exposure mean in terms of perception and satisfaction? And what, what are the implications on energy? So we conducted an experiment to see how diversifying the indoor conditions throughout different city zones and the duration of a certain time. Here we choose a lecture filter uh, because it is more challenging to create a uniform indoor environmental conditions. Considering the occupancy density, the size of the space, and the limitation on the ability of indoor uh, environment control system relative to the geometry of the space. So firstly, the geometrical and volumetrical features of the typical lecture filter are that it has this inclined seating to achieve the maximum visual function across the entire city zone. So the lecturer is located in the front with the greatest ceiling to floor height, which progressively shortens towards the back of the lecture theater, away from the lecturer. This potentially restricts the mixing ability of the air distribution system, typically being a central supply design with air terminal devices that are of similar geometry. Secondly, the air distribution system is often inadequately designed to achieve effective ventilation for occupancy, which is usually good rather than uniformly distributed across the city zone. And thirdly, it is often that a single thermostat is installed, and depending on its location, all the VAV damper will operate based on the temperature sensed at the thermostat. 
So the greater the diversity in temperature within the lecture theater, the greater the mismatch between the amount of air supplied and the amount needed for optimal condition. So to just assume a uniform condition, or just to base on a single measurement uh, of the temperature or air quality within a space, would incur the inaccuracies by not taking these diversities into consideration. So here are the details of this lecture, of the lecture theater. It has a maximum capacity of 220 people, and it has this step design, uh, where in total 13 rows are arranged, uh, and with each row of the seats being a step higher than the previous. There are 12 four-way supply diffusers as shown in the black boxes, and the eight red boxes are the return grill where they are lo located. The environmental control is provided by a dedicated fan core unit installed in the ceiling platinum at the front of the lecture theater and controlled by a single thermal stand which is located near the front entrance on the right on the wall. And the fan core unit draws outdoor air valve duct with a uh, air filter at its entrance and the chilled water coil will provide the cooling capability where the chilled water flow rate virus according to the thermal stand settings. So we have placed uh, sensors at the row 1, row 4, row 7, row 10, and row 13. The sensor used is this Aware Omni, which uh, was co-located with other instruments for verification. We have also manually collected the occupancy data uh, every one minute. And we have placed the thermal mannequin inside the lecture theater at different locations, both at the uh, last row and the first row to understand the skin temperature of the mannequin. In order to better understand the indoor conditions, occupant satisfaction, set, uh, energy consumption, uh, we have conducted three different interventions. So first, we manually set the indoor temperature at 21, 25, and 27 uh, at the thermal stand. And secondly, after the first of two measurements, it is found that the fresh air duct was choked up and then the filter was removed so more fresh air can be drawn in. And lastly, the measurements were undertaken on two days within the week, one involving only a small size class where there are less than uh, 80 people and the other involved both large size classes um, with a number of people more than 150. So the measurements were repeated to, uh, on the same time slot uh, each week by performing these temperature and the ventilation interventions to evaluate the effects on the occupant's response and energy implications. Here is a summary of data collected. So through the survey, some general information such as seating rows, gender, causing type, and then the perception and satisfaction of temperature and movement, uh, air quality and the overall, as well as the sick building syndrome were collected. Next group of data are collected from the sensors. So we collected data about the temperature, the relative humidity, CO2 concentration levels, as well as the VOC every five minutes. And third part is the data collected through a BTU meter installed. Uh, so we have collected the chilled water flow rate, supply and return temperature, as well as the cooling energy. And last is the thermal mannequin surface temperature. The perception and satisfaction of students were collected on the hour after the lecture has begun uh, at a proper scheduled recess. So the measurement and survey was repeated four times for each of the three different lecturers, lectures. Totally 891 responses were collected as shown here. I'm sorry, maybe due to the um, picture resolution, so this part shows black. I'm not going to uh, describe the details about here. Basically, the more uh, for perception, satisfaction, and sick building syndrome, the more towards the red color, uh, it means more people are feeling dissatisfied or more intense of sick building syndromes. So here, uh, first, I will just let you uh, visualize how the thermal stratification looks like throughout uh, the time period of the lecture, which is about 101, one hour and 30 minutes.
We can notice that this is at the beginning, not much difference. Gradually move to the end of the lecture, there is a very clear stratification of the temperature in the lecture theater. So here shows the details of two cases of these thermal stratifications. On the left-hand side uh, is a small class where there are 72 number of people. We have placed the sensor also near the thermal stand to see what is achieved there. So we can see that at the thermal stand, uh, which is showing blue, as well as uh, row one, green, and row four, yellow, uh, the three lines shows a very stable, around 21.5 degrees C to 22.2 degrees C. However, from row seven to row 13, the temperature starts to rise after the beginning of lecture. The thermal stratification is around more than two degree difference at the end of the lecture. And on the right hand side is a different case where the temperature set point at 27 degrees C and there are two large uh, consecutive class. One is from 10 a.m. to about 11.30 a.m. So here we have 157 people and the second lecture starts from 12 p.m. until 1.30 p.m where the occupant number is 152. We can actually see the temperature drops between the two lectures uh, as people were leaving. Uh, so again, this, uh, in for these two cases, the front row, especially the row one, and as well as the, the temperature at the set point, um, shows a very quite gentle slope in the temperature increase. But for upper zones, especially the row 10 and row 13, uh, this shows a much steeper slope for both classes. The thermal stratification is around 3 degrees C for the first class and 3.5 degrees C for the second. There are a few uh, reasons for this stratification happen. So first, the step design makes the warm air rises to the upper zone. And secondly, the return air is through the ceiling plenum return, where the fan is located above the ceiling outside the front entrance which creates an imbalanced suction of return air. And thirdly, most of the students prefer to sit at the behind. So for small class where there are 72 people to fit into this 200 capacity lecture room, almost 100% of them sit from row seven and above. And that's why from row one to row four, the temperature remains stable. And for large classes, we notice that for all the cases, around 70% to 75% of the students prefer to sit at the uh, upper zone, at the behind, where more heat is gen uh, generated but trapped there. The CO2 concentration level also shows a stratification with row 10 and row 13 have a much uh, steeper slope compared with row 1 and row 4. Uh, by the end of the lecture, between the row one and row 13 for small class, there is around 260 ppm uh, difference about of the CO2 concentration levels. And the highest reaches 1,700 ppm at the uh, 13th row. And for large size class, um, the difference between row one and row 13 is about 600 ppm by the end of the lecture at the highest CO2 concentration level, which is even 3,000 ppm. So in order to better understand the perception and satisfaction, the whole lecture theater was divided into two zones, the upper zone and the lower zones. So next, we did the statistical data analysis. Uh, we can see with the set point at 27 degrees Celsius, which is on the left-hand side, there is a significant difference on people's temperature perception and movement perception and temperature satisfactions. And on the right hand side, when the set point is at 21 degrees C, there is a significant difference on people's temperature perception, air quality perception, and air quality satisfaction. So if we look at the details, uh, when the set point at 21 degrees C, more people from the lower zone feel cold. Uh, around 49 percent, uh, while people from the upper zone uh, is more feel like cool or slightly cool, or even more than 20 percent vote for just comfortable. While on the right hand side, when temperature set point at 27 degrees C, although there are around 50 percent half of the people from both zones feels just comfortable, the rest people from the upper zone uh, will feel 
more towards the warm side, while people from the lower zone, which is in orange, will feel more towards the cool and cold side. Next is the perception on air quality. When the set point at 21 degrees C, the perception of air quality is significantly different. The upper zone uh, tends to feel the air is more smell and steady, like 67% uh, of the people go for a little smell and stale. However, when the temperature is at 27 degrees C, there is no significant difference on the air quality perceptions. Um, so next, we divide the whole data into these nine data sets with the uh, um, temperature cut point at 25 degrees C and 22 degrees C, and CO2 concentration level cut point at 1,300 ppm and 1,900 ppm. So here, for example, data one means uh, the data have a CO2 concentration level below 1,300 ppm and above 25 degrees C. So first, let's compare the data three and data uh, data set three and data set nine, where they have a high, very high CO2 concentration levels above 1,900 ppm, but different temperature. Data three is have a high temperature above 25, while data set nine have a low temperature, which is below 22 degrees C. So when we compare the perception and the satisfaction of air quality from these two data sets, it is found there is no significant difference. And then next, if we compare the data set 1 and data set 7 again, where the CO2 concentration level is at a medium high, uh, below 1,300 ppm, now we found that there is a significant difference on both perception and satisfaction of air qualities. A lower temperature will bring a better uh, perception and better satisfaction on air qualities. So here is a very interesting uh, result, which shows a lower temperature will have a mask effect on the perception uh, on air quality. Only when the CO2 concentration level is at medium high range. So if the CO2 concentration level is very high above 1,900 ppm, this mask effect from the low temperature uh, will not exist. The so next is about the skin surface temperature from the thermal mannequin. So the mannequin has 26 body segments. The surface temperature of different segments are shown here. It shows, for example, when temperature set point at 21 degrees C here. So in this case, we have placed the thermal mannequin both uh, at the front row or the back row. So if we compare the uh, green line and the blue line, we find there is a, uh, there is a gap on the skin surface temperature. The biggest um, difference is found at here, the hand, as well as face, as well as uh, leg and thigh. So the difference is about 1 to 1.5 degrees C on the skin surface temperature. And a similar result was found when the set point temperature at 27 degrees C. Uh, here shows the result from the mixed linear model to show the different implications on the cooling power from different variables. So it shows to provide a better air quality does not impose much on energy consumption. However, to decrease the temperature set point has the highest cooling power penalty, providing more fresh air to decrease CO2 concentration by 100 ppm incurs a power increase of 0 0.63 kilowatt, which is less than 14% expanded by decreasing the set point temperature by one degree C. Based on this cooling power penalty in the study, the reduction in cooling power associated with a 0.5 degree C increase in set point temperature could be better spent to reduce the CO2 concentration levels by almost 400 ppm. Um, just now we have talked about the indoor diversity from one of the few studies, which is caused due to the limitation of the air distribution system as well as the control system. Another factor which should be taken into account is individual preference. Uh, even when the indoor condition is well mixed and uniformity is maintained, the people still have different perception and different preference. So some is feel okay, some is feel cold, some is feel warm, some prefer fans, 
how this diversity should be addressed. So one of the systems that have been developed for the past few decades is personalized ventilation. A lot of study has already proved several advantages of the systems. For example, it can uh, deliver the uh, fresh air directly into the breathing zone. So it is possible to achieve a reduction of about 80% in the pollutants level in inhaled air. And several prototypes have also been developed and installed in the world. Uh, some are for office, some are for uh, healthcare settings. So instead of talking about the ventilation among alone, the zone air distribution effectiveness should be used to evaluate and measure the effectiveness of supply air distribution to the breathing zone. The recent A3 standard 62.1 has added the personalized ventilation in the zone air distribution infection table, uh, effectiveness table, so that the designers can have something to follow. Uh, we can see from the table, a city supply mixer ventilation will have a zone air distribution effectiveness of 1, but for personalized ventilation, it could yield a zone air distribution effectiveness of above 1.2. Uh, depending on what kind of background system is used. So the highest could be 1.5. We have also conducted a study in an environment chamber to see how the personalized system could help with occupant satisfaction with the thermal and air quality. So the chamber is looked like this. There are 16 workstations. We have placed eight people uh, sitting at the eight workstations for the experiments. The experiments were conducted twice so totally, uh, we have feedback from the 16 subjects. And the personalized ventilation system uh, looks like this. The air terminal device is a desktop air terminal devices. So we have uh, three different cases. Um, one is when the background is kept at 23 degrees 65 RH, and the ventilation is provided through the background ventilation. I think the case one is very typical for the tropical and subtropical conditions. Uh, number two is when the background is rise to 26 degrees C and RH keep at 65%. Again, the ventilation is kept through uh, the background ventilation systems. So we collected the survey uh, at the beginning, at 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Uh, a different uh, time. So we found that, um, sorry, we collect, the, uh, we collect the survey from the uh, beginning and then 3 minutes, 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, and 60 minutes. So we collect um, to see the, the adaptations of occupants. So it is found that by comparing the orange line, which is case two, and the um, uh, blue line, which is uh, case one, it is found when the background temperature rises from 23 to 26, the people's satisfaction on temperature and air quality both dropped only until after one hour the, uh, due to the adaptation. I think you know, people's satisfaction over temperature and air quality started to rise. Now let's look at the case three. At case 3, we still keep the background at 26 degrees C and 65%, but instead of providing the ventilation through the background ventilation, we provide it through the personalized ventilation system. So now we look at the satisfaction again, which is shown in this line with the green dot. So we can see, compared with the orange line, the, both the satisfaction of temperature and air quality um, rises. So this means um, the personalized ventilation could help with people's uh, satisfaction with temperature and air quality. And most importantly, it shows a large potential to save energy as the background can keep at higher temperature. Okay, here comes to the conclusion. First of all, the indoor diversity exists. It may due to the unwell mixed air from the air distribution system, or due to the limitations on the ability of the environmental control system to achieve and maintain a uniform condition. It may also come from the difference of individual preference as well. The indoor diversity will have an impact on occupants' perception and satisfaction of thermal condition and indoor environment quality, as well as energy consumption. 
the ventilation penalty is low from the study, but brings advantages to perception and satisfaction. The zone air distribution effectiveness should be considered when talking about ventilation and air distribution. And personalized ventilation uh, could be an option to address the individual preference difference, as well as to provide the occupants better satisfaction. So this study is founded by the CBS of the National University of Singapore. Uh, I, here I thank my colleagues and collaborators for the above mentioned studies. And thank you. Dr. Jun Ying Yong for sharing your knowledge on indoor diversity and occupant satisfaction with respect to inhaled air quality and energy efficiency in buildings, which is the need of the hour in this current pandemic situation. Ultratech Lightcon is lightweight, smart filler concrete used as a filling and leveling material. Ultratech Lightcon has been awarded Green Pro Certification Product by Green Products and Service Council. Benefits to end customer. First, no mechanical vibrators are used, so it saves cost. Second, it provides excellent sound insulation, which help create spaces where sound from neighboring rooms do not create disturbance. Third, it is fire resistant. It can reduce damage to structure in case of fire. Fourth, long lasting roofs of structure, as it is lightweight concrete. Fifth, heat insulation, hence can help reduce the electricity bill by keeping the area cooler. Sixth, it can be used as a leveling course without adding dead weight, thus ensuring good working surface. Benefits to the applicator and technical influencer. First, Ultratech Lightcon possesses excellent workability and can be placed in any desired shape so applicators can use it in various shapes. Second, the process of application is easier as it is easy to handle and easy to spread. Third, this concrete has better fire resistance, excellent heat and sound insulation, thus giving the applicator talking points to charge premium and be able to technically provide solutions to the needs of his customers, making him seen as an expert. Fourth, it allows easy handling at the time of placement. Fifth, it can be applied with all traditional surface finishes, paint, tiles, carpets, etc. Hence, easy for the applicator to use the product. Ultratech Lightcon is lightweight smart filler concrete used as a filling and leveling material, thereby reducing the dead load on structure and provides ease of placement. Let's learn about its application process. It is a concrete with lower density foam concrete or thermocol beads. The concrete is delivered to site using both transit mixers or buckets as per the requirement of the customer. Since Ultratech Lightcon is typically used as a filler material and on roofs, it is advisable that proper planning is made to transport the concrete from delivery point, from the transit mixer to the point of placement. Normally, it is done manually. However, in case of larger pore sizes, pumping may be performed. Lightcon can be easily spread and leveled with least amount of efforts. Lightcon hardens in about 24 to 36 hours so as to allow people to walk over it.